I'm here with uh, Callie Brady, daughter of a legendary drum manufacturer from Australia, Chris Brady. So, Callie, could you tell me something about the thoughts behind making the Walkabout series? The Walkabout series um, is kind of a, a fun, uh, almost a side project, as it were. It's uh, kind of like the Willy Wonka, I guess, of uh, drum craftsmanship. You know, in Australia, we're blessed with all of these different species of trees, and so many of them have been unexplored for anything, let alone uh, let alone drum manufacture or, or drum sounds. And um, you never really know what's out there until you try it. So, I mean, a lot of how we started was built on those principles. It was like, what if, or maybe, or what does that sound like? Well, if you don't know, you should go out and try it. And with the Walkabout series, we have our standard line of drums. We have um, our standard ply shells, standard block shells. We've also introduced baritones, which are different again, but there will be a standard item for us. But the Walkabout series is basically all the really cool, rare, undiscovered stuff. It's where you get to go out on, on an expedition. So it's kind of cool because, you know, there's always drummers out there that want something that nobody else has. And with the Walkabout series, you're pretty much guaranteed that nobody else is going to have what you have. Your next door neighbor can't buy what you have. So if you get something as one of a kind, we have a kit here um, that's behind your cameraman right now. It's a one of a kind. That's it. We're not doing it again. I promise, trust me. But it's a stunning kit, but you're never going to see it again. And that's what the Walkabout series is kind of all about. It's, it's being able to, to do really cool, interesting stuff, being able to bring new sounds, or in some cases, new finishes to the drum world of things that have never been heard before. And that's what's really cool about it. And it's, it's kind of a buzz. I heard on the, on the grapevine that uh, the Brady Company itself was uh, launched uh, on a debate on what was possible uh, yes. to make instruments from. Uh, could you tell me something about uh, this, uh, this rumor? It's true. It's actually not a rumor. It's completely true. My dad is um, a unique guy quite argumentative and, and I think a lot of what fuels him is the thought that something can't be done or when someone says it, it's not possible well he says the more he thinks about it and he thinks that it can be so he goes out and does it and you are absolutely right this company was founded on that principle it was told you could not make a solid shell uh, snare drum from a, a hollow tree trunk there was stability issues and, and there was a lot of conversation and argument back and forth that it, that it wasn't possible because a tree is essentially a living thing. When you cut it down, you start messing with moisture contents and, and you know, misbehaving in many different ways. So there was there was the argument. And it, the conclusion of that conversation was, no, it couldn't be done. Absolutely not. Can't be done. Two years later, he went out and did it. He did actually make a solo, solid hollow tree trunk snare drum shell so different to anything else that was out there took it to the local concert hall, Chick Corea was in town and said, and said, hey, I've got this drum, it sounds good to me, but you know, what do you think? And Chick Corea said, if you ever make another one, I want it. And that's exactly how Brady Drum Company was started, you know. So for 34 years, yeah, it was based on the principle of, oh, it can't be done? Let me prove you wrong. Yes, it can be. I think we can do it. Considering markets, the, the market is uh, kind of flooded. With uh, with all kinds of custom drums and uh, and you can you can get all sorts of drums these days. What do you consider being your uh, main market uh, um, nationwide? Uh, I think for us, um, we got lucky. I mean, we came out around um, 19, 1980. It was a very different era, and as you said, it is uh, the custom drum market is quite flooded now. But I think what separates the ones that become very successful, even the newer ones that become very successful, and, and the ones that don't, comes down to um, having a unique angle. If you want to import shells and put hardware on it yourself and call it a custom drum company, okay, maybe that's great. If you want to sell to your friends, that's great. But if you want to be you know, successful and sustain your business and be known in 20 years, you have to have something that's unique. And for us, I think it's it's the sound, and for us the sound comes from the different timbers that we get to work with in Australia, and also the way that we do it. We don't cross laminate our ply shells. We do do stave, uh, stave constructions, but we've been doing it a very long time, so all of that really cool um, 
pop and rock that came out in the late 80s, you know, that was all Brady Staves. Like, even through modern day, you know, right now you'll see the guy from Kings of Leon playing a 14 by 6.5 Brady Jarrah block snare because it's just unique. And if it was just a, it's the same snare as everybody else, just a different color or with different looking lugs, nobody would care. And, and I think that's true across the board, which is why I'm here with Ron Danette. He does something very different again. Uh, Cooper Akuten, he's a young kid, he's still fairly new. He makes great stuff as well. It's just different. You have to be different. You have to be able to stand out and stand out on your own merits. Um, it's not about who endorses you or that kind of stuff or what color your hardware is. It's really about sound because at the end of the day, we're all musicians. And what met doesn't really matter. Even my extremely good looking, I'm completely biased, good looking, stunning drum kit behind me, <laughs> which I'm. It is proud. stunning. Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because if it sounds terrible, then who cares? So it's really about the sound. You have to be able to. It has to be a great sounding instrument. And a lot of companies forget that. You can do very fancy things. You can cut big holes in your shells, slap different funky colored hardware on. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's a musical instrument and it's all about the sound. And if it doesn't sound good, you know, it's a fad. And I can promise you, it sounds good. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. I think so. Thank you very much, Kelly. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming by.